time point. Now, before proceeding to the next presentation, I would like to introduce my co-chair, what I should have done before. Professor Hans-Joachim Günthroth is a physicist, and he was the driving force of evolution of nano uh, science in Switzerland in the last uh, two decades, three decades. And uh, the uh, uh, nanomedicine efforts here in Basel actually are to a part go back to an encounter we had uh, 15 years ago uh, where we really came to the conclusion that this combination of nanotechnology coming from a physics side and medicine from a clinic, clinical side makes a lot of sense. Hans, please uh, uh, introduce the next. Uh, Thank you, Patrick. The second talk is entitled Ponypit, a new delivery system using polypit technology for the treatment of contaminated open bone fractures. The talk will be given by Dr. Emanuel from Polypit LTT in Israel. Good morning. Thank you for the organizer inviting Polypit to present. So uh, let's start with polypid and then go to uh, bonypid. And don't be misunderstood between those two. First of all, there are polymers very well known and the other platform, lipids. So many talks about these two. Uh, so much knowledge about these two. But actually, what is polypid is a combination. It's innovation combination of fusion between those two uh, platform. Here's the polymer and the lipid and the drug, whereas poly is for polymers, PID is for lipid, together polypid. Uh, I don't have much time to explain about that, but generally speaking, it's a, a nano uh, structure, a repeated element of alternate layers of lipids, polymers, lipid polymers, one after the other, whereas the drug is interrupted between those layers. There is no covalent bonds in this system at all between the drug or other compounds. So, the most common local drug delivery, and polypid is in local drug delivery, is polymer. But commonly, you have huge bursts, initial bursts that can be toxic, then decline, first, second order decline of the, of the release rate. Whereas with polypid technology, we prefer something like that. That means to control initially, to control the immediate release, then to control also the release rate, preferably zero-order kinetics, means constant release over time, and then also to control duration. But another aspect is important, is to protect the drug reservoir locally in vivo. If you want a prolonged duration, you have to take into consideration that there is degradation, either biodegradation by enzyme, but also water-related degradation. As you can see here with this molecule, it's uh, doxycycline antibiotics. Three weeks after exposure to water, you have about 20% of the drug. Therefore, your drug as well can be lost. But in our system, the drug is fully protected within the lipid layer and therefore is not exposed to hydration. As you can see here, there is no degradation between the layers of this drug. <laughs> What type of API can be used? Basically, <coughs> any type we tested, starting with small molecules, antibiotics and others, peptides that we have a very nice project with, proteins, and even nucleic acid like siRNA, etc. So it's a very wide platform. You can do many things, but still you need to focus. And our focus was the orthopedic, or is the orthopedic solutions for now. And within the orthopedic, we are concentrated in Bonipid, where I will present the data. But please remember that bonipid reflect on polypid, so whatever you understand about bonipid from the aspect of drug delivery system actually reflect on the platform itself. So first of all, we are in open fracture. That's the need. So immediately after the fracture, what we really want is bone recovery, of course, as soon as possible. But every open fracture are basically contaminated to begin with because it's open fracture. And many times it's already infected, as in this case, you can see it here. So the unmet is very clear. You have to protect bone uh, recovery by eliminating the bacterial contamination. So this is the situation today. <coughs> there is the Gustilo grade, very famous grading, 1, 2, 3A, 3B, 3C. You can see the infection rate goes up, the amputation rate goes up. That's the meaning of type 3 uh, fractures. <coughs> and about 2 million events per year worldwide. 
As, that, as you can see, this is the situation it considered very, very bad. Although people use anything that is known in the art, any uh, chirurgic, any uh, devices, and of course, any antibiotics or any other drugs. So the unmet need is very, very clear. And why is that? Basically because of one thing. Systemic antibiotic can hardly penetrate into bone fractures and into bone to begin with, but bone fractures are even more severe. Therefore, the, the basic solution should be uh, systemic, but also to include local delivery that should be prolonged and controlled as well. So this is the concept of bonipid. Bonipid, of course, based on polypid technology. <coughs> so what is bonipid? Bonipid is granules, bone granules, that are basically using the art in order to fill bone gaps. But we coat it with polypid formulation that includes antibiotic. The antibiotic is doxycycline. This is doxycycline. And uh, <coughs> this is a very old drug. It's uh, <laughs> approved 50 years ago. Everything is known, very safe, very effective, and uh, we, we select that because of the wide, uh, wide activity of this drug. So actually we have two activities. One is bone scaffolding by the device, and on the other hand we have the antibacterial effect, so we have both effects that should lead to successful bone healing. So that's the release uh, profile of uh, bonipid, and here, as said, reflected polypid. Why is that? First, we optimize the profile. We can optimize every aspect. First of all, we select the best drug. Now we optimize the release profile. Zero the kinetics. <coughs> now you can select according to need of the specific drug. You can select the best release rate in order to achieve several mi concentration per hour during 30 days, four weeks. So you can select also duration, release rate, optimize the profile, and get zero the kinetics. That's the, the idea of Bonipid. Uh, there is a lot of data per clinically, but I don't have time to present, sorry, but you can go into uh, JCR to learn more about Bonipid. <coughs> so this is the, uh, the product, and this is how it is presented, poor, hydrate, use, very, very simple. <coughs> Here you can see it in the clinical situation, that's the emergency room situation, that's the dislocation of the bone, and here's the insertion of bonipid into the bone. So what about the dose? Look at the dose. About half a pill of antibiotics, that is all. One vial of bonipid contains 10 grams of antibiotics, 10 grams of packets, sorry, contain half a pill of antibiotics, whereas for systemic, for 30 days, you will, get, you will need 100 times more drug and still get very little. So what we do, first of all, trauma, then standard of care, the common standard of care, irrigation, debridement, fixation, and then systemic antibiotic, plus one vial of bonipid. Uh, the, the surgeon allowed to put up to two vials. It means one plus minus one pill of antibiotics. 16 patients were treated, first in men's study, <coughs> single arm, open label. <coughs> so we select only these patients. 3A, 3B, very severe, and, uh, and uh, you can see here one patient, you can see what's come out of the, of the wound, a lot of dirt actually. This is another one, here you see it came to the hospital about six days after injury. That means that it's not only contaminated, but basically infected, and biofilm probably is there. <coughs> you can see it's very severe. That's the hematology. <coughs> You can see the drop in CRP, uh, suggesting that probably the population is not infected. Again, stress factor like CPK, again, very sharp drop after one week. First of all, the results. Over 80% after six months were healed completely from the aspect of bone union. But more important, there was no infection in none of the patients. <laughs> Whereas in control group, historical control group, 22% infection in Gustillo 3A, 3B in this hospital. Here you can appreciate how fast people recover. This is day one, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, and basically that's it. 
Uh, here you can see that the uh, bony PID insertion is associated with bone recovery, but I don't have to show more, don't have time. So that's the conclusion basically. Standard of care plus bony PID, significant anti-infection effect. And we believe that this is due to the local delivery, prolonged release, about 30 days, uh, control release, so it's several mi concentration per hour during these 30 days and protected drug reservoir, that means you can take a very small reservoir and still make it very, very active without degradation in vivo. Um, no serious adverse event. Uh, there was high safety profile for bonipid. It is now produced in GMP, in high scale, in Europe. And this is our active advisory board. Initially, Professor Barnold sitting here with us, very well known, but also Dr. Fitchtar from Teva, known for a role in the Copaxone. Professor Ramon Gustillo, you remember the grading, that's the same Gustillo. Professor David Segal. And this is Polypid, the idea of Polypid, established 2008, sitting in Israel, 21 people. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for these very interesting contributions. Are there any questions for the audience? I have a question. <laughs> I'm back here. Uh, and this is the question that the results of your trial look very promising. Now, it's not a randomized trial. It has historical controls. It has historical, yeah. uh, Do you plan to randomize this, or do you believe that your results are so convincing that this is the way to go forward. How about the regulatory aspects of uh, historical controls versus randomized trials in your application? First of all, it will be approved as PMA. It's a device and a drug. First of all, it's a device, and then comes a drug on top of that to support the device. That's the strategy in general. Now, regarding the trial itself, for now, this was uh, presenting, uh, we present only the first in-man study, but we are now in the second study that he will be conducting, uh, is conducting in Europe as well as in Asia and Israel as well. And this one will be much larger, but still uh, single arm at, that stage, at this stage. But uh, the results are very promising, are very clear, uh, as stated by uh, Professor Gustillo. He never saw such a results. And for him, it really, it's a huge promise. He's really happy to, to participate. He established this grading uh, late 80, somewhere in the 80s, and until today he was dreaming for such a result. So we hope that uh, the next study will be even more successful, it will be larger, but still single arm at this case. Additional questions? Okay, thank you very thank much. You very much.